Long ago, in a remote corner of the world, ancient astronauts landed from a distant planet with a gift for mankind, the Phoenix. For a thousand years, he has waited, suspended in time. Now, he's awakened to complete his mission. He searches for his partner, Mira, for only she knows his ultimate assignment on Earth. Dependent on the sun for his strength and survival, endowed with a superior intelligence, he has fully developed the powers of the human mind. Relentlessly pursued by those who seek to control him, he must stay free. the Houghton Stables? Get in. Oh, thanks. What are you doing all the way out here in the middle of nowhere? Looking for Indians. <laughs> Is that an occupation or a hobby? Find any Indians in Houghton Stables? I don't know, maybe. Well, I've seen a few cowboys there, but never an Indian. Ah, well, you see, the Indians I'm looking for were there a thousand years ago. Yeah? Listen, will you do me a favor? Sure. Can you give this to the lady inside? She's got some really nice Indian jewelry and some baskets. I'm sure you'll find that interesting. All right. Thanks. Out, brother. <laughs> mm. You know, we ain't got no fancy glasses. No, thanks. Nice car. Hey, look here. You ever ride a bike? You know, you just don't know what you're missing. Don't get to ride in no Mercedes. Well, let's go, lady. Just you and me. I believe you're in my seat. Well, why didn't you tell me you had a boyfriend? <laughs> Would you get out now, please? Sure. When I'm ready. Now.
Who can I find, Dr. Hack? Right here. <laughs> From sex, age, or color. I'm only here because I was ordered to come. I trust it'll be worth my while. I understand that Benu has proven to be a more difficult quarry than you had anticipated. Well, I appreciate your concern, Doctor. However, it's none of your business. Oh, I think it is. And apparently, so does the director of your agency. Got company. Do you believe that? I go through a stop sign and he's here. Where was he when we needed him? Don't you want my phone number? 555-0735. You know it. Well, I, uh, maybe the officer took it when he was writing you that ticket, or... No, I don't think so. Well, thank you for the ride. You bet. Hey. You looking for someone? Yeah, I'm looking for the manager. That's my mom. What do you want? A job. Come on, I'll take you to her. What's your name? Roddy. Hi, I'm Benu. I'm looking for work. Oh, I'm sorry. But, Mom, I told them that. I thought we were looking for someone to take Pedro's place. <laughs> He's got a burr under the saddle there. What? When you press down, it rubs on a sore spot. That's why he won't take the fence. Oh. Um, sweetheart, I need you to get back to your chores. Okay. Good afternoon. Sorry. It's okay. Bye. Hi, Dad. Hey, who's that? His name's Benu. What's he want? A job. Hey! Come back here, will ya? Roddy tells me you need a job. Well, just temporarily. Where are you from? Here and there. You know horses? Sure. You mind working up a sweat? Mm-mm, I enjoy it. Who is that man? What is he doing there? Jack's going to bring the plane there at about 4.45. That field is the reason I picked this place. He said he'll give us two minutes to make the turnaround. Give me however much time I need. We'll be loading in rich geranium, not fertilizer. Is that man still there? Still there. Find out who he is. I don't like surprises. Two bucks an hour. Room and board thrown in, okay? 
Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Going up to the house? I got to feed the hens, and I told Mom I'd help her with the donuts. All right. See you at dinner. Him. We need some muscle around here, Cindy. Mrs. Carpenter didn't cancel, did she? No, Penny's still with us. I was only trying to help. I know you were. Last week you told me we were going broke, and now you hire a new stable hand. Well, things have changed. How? I got a loan. I thought the bank turned us down. It's private money. What does that mean? It's just a short-term deal. You'll see us through the show in Santa Barbara. And then what? Well, we might have to sell uh, Ziggy and Adonis. And I pay back the loan, and we're out from under. Jack, what have you done? I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'll see you after the lessons. my land, not my house. I'm giving you your money back, and then I want you to get out. It's too late for that, Mr. Houghton. Get away from me. No harm. What's going on here? You didn't mean to frighten Frida. Did you, my darling? Just being affectionate. I'm calling the police. You see that the fly is very much alive. Of course I do. Now concentrate on that metal plane. Making a figure eight pattern with your mind. I assume this has a purpose. Did I do that? No hidden wires or poisonous capsules. How does it work? It's called psychotronics. See, thoughts are energy. They have vibrations just like radio waves. And this plate is a transformer. And by concentrating on it, you channeled your own mental energies, which killed that fly. Well, that's quite a party trick, Doctor. However, I fail to see how it justifies bringing me all the way up here. It's more than a party trick. Benu uses psychotronics. And according to eyewitness accounts so generously provided by your director, I would say that Benu has developed his mind power to a degree never before seen on Earth. So I should be on the lookout for dead flies. It's no joke, Mr. Preminger. According to eyewitness accounts... You ever hear of a man by the name of Harry Houdini? The magician? Yeah, he considered himself an illusionist. A bit of a skeptic. He didn't believe in psychic powers. He left the room the reputation of many though were frauds. I wouldn't put too much stock in those eyewitness accounts. The Russians have been using telepathy to contact their astronauts, to direct missiles, even kill people. That's not an illusion. That's reality. When I find Benno, he'll be put through the most rigorous medical and scientific tests devised. Not in my opinion that they'll find anything. Then, once all the tests are completed, I'll be more than willing to receive applications for Soothsayers, crystal ball watches, and tea leaf readers, even you, Doctor. Uh, Mr. Preminger, an agent Evans left this message for you. Sorry, but we lost him. 
<laughs> he has a knack for getting away from you, doesn't he? Suppose I tell you where you can find him. You think he can? No. One of my soothsayers might. Well, what do we have here? Bobby or business? Grandma's eat the first dozen, and then sell the rest for my allowance. The only thing is they won't lay more than six a week. Six, huh? Well, what are you feeding them? Mashed with table scraps. I'd say your trouble is light. Light? Mm-hmm. I think we'll try a scarlet-colored light bulb in here. That should help. What? Do you ever use a dog whistle? Sure. Well, you know how the sound is too high for us to hear, right? Well, it's the same thing with light. There's some light that we just can't see, but it's still there, and if we use it, it can help make things grow. You uh, know about horses, and you know about light. What other tricks do you have up your sleeve? Tricks, huh? <laughs> Let's see if I can make this disappear. <laughs> That's the cliff where I'll be waiting with George. Where am I? There. And me? With the van, behind the cliff. That's George now. We transfer the uranium to the van. While the idiots wait for us there, we double back here and get the plane. Were you followed? No. Did you get everything? I got a 9mm Mac-10. This is semi-automatic and it doesn't have a silencer. It's a gas bombs. I'll say on the timer. It's 20 second delay. Instantaneous. Isn't it gratifying to know we're helping an underdeveloped nation join the nuclear club? When we've got the bomb, they'll have to listen to us. What are you going to do about the woman and the boy? We'll have to keep them alive. At least until we get back. and child. This Sci-Fi Channel program is brought to you I owe you an apology. When you got here, I, I was kind of edgy. Well... We've been under some real financial pressure around here lately. Well, I'd be happy to work for room and board. Oh, no, thank you. That won't be necessary. You know, actually, the reason I'm here is to study the Hokan picture caves that are up in the hills. Oh. Have you talked to Roddy about them? No. We go riding up there almost every day. At least we used to. Roddy is just fascinated by that Indian stuff. But lately, with all the um, tensions around here, I haven't had much time to go riding with him. I think he's beginning to feel a little neglected. How would you like to take him out? Sure. If you think you can spare me. Well, I think we can spare you for a couple of hours. Here. We keep trail lunches in the fridge by the tack room. You guys can have a picnic. Ronnie would just love it. All right. I 
I put that scarlet bulb in. When will they begin to lay? Soon enough. Do you really think it'll work? Well, what have we got to lose? Yeah, I guess you're right. How do you like Ziggy? <sighs> he's spirited. Dad won't let me ride him. He says he's too wild. When do you want to take care of the woman? Is the boy still out with that stable hand? They went out about an hour ago. We take the woman when we go. interested in your work. Well, then why is he radiating green? <laughs> if you don't believe in psychic powers, what are you doing here? Dr. Hackett has great faith in you. I'm looking for a certain individual who's very important to me. Murder? Kidnapping? I had a most intriguing case last month. Bits of bodies all over the place. The murderer turned... Madam, it's a matter of urgency. Too much dull red in your aura, young man. You should watch that temper of yours. Anger ruins livers faster than alcohol. The man I'm looking for is Caucasian in his 20s. Blonde, about 6'2". Would you have anything that belonged to him? No. Well, anything he touched or handled? No. A photograph? Not of him. You show me a coffin, but the occupant is not dead. He... He... It's not from this world. He... Oh... Oh... He's in great... Terrible danger from... from... someone from his own world. Oh... some... thing! I can't get a face. I... to have been consumed by fire and then reborn again out of its own ashes every 500 years. That sounds weird. Come on, the really good stuff is inside. down there looks like a man in a spacesuit. But it couldn't be. The drawing is over 500 years old. Well, there is an old Indian legend about gods and fiery chariots coming down from the heavens. Is that what you're looking for? No, not exactly. Tell me. Maybe I can help you find it. This is what I'm looking for. 
Have you ever seen anything like that around here? No. What's down there? Nothing. It's spooky. Why don't you go wait outside? I'm going to go take a look. Don't worry. I won't be long. Okay? See everything in black and white, not black and white. You just had a, a little fall, that's all. Something spooked Ziggy. It wasn't his fault. I know. Are you all right? Yeah, I feel great. <laughs> I'm lucky I didn't fall down there. You sure are, huh? Come on, let's go. you get her no! ah! where are you taking me please i have a child if she becomes
most difficult shooter. I ran through a stop sign. Since when is that a federal offense? I'm not interested in a traffic violation. I'm interested in the man the officer saw you with in the car. That's none of your business. Oh, I'm afraid it is. He's wanted by the federal government. What for? That's classified. Yeah? Well, so is my privacy. The officer said uh, you seemed very friendly. Have you known him a long time? I just met him. I picked him up hitchhiking. Isn't that rather foolish for a single woman to be picking up a hitchhiker? I don't make a policy of it. And why him? Oh, because he looked vulnerable. You know, I really don't want to talk about this anymore. And uh, I have this friend who's a lawyer. Miss Ferris, you can tell me what I want to know. Or I can put you under 24-hour surveillance. I don't believe that he's capable of hurting anybody or anything. Well, I'm glad you're such an astute judge of human character. Where did you drop him? Post Hopkins at the door. Harris can take the second watch around midnight and we'll bring cover in in the morning. They're very discreet. He's at the Horton Stables. to the house. Do you have to go? I finished all the work in the barn. I just can't stay. What I'm looking for isn't here. How about a picture? Would you take a picture of me and my friend? Sure, I'd love to. You know, I really do have to go. It'll only take a second. Ready? Thank you. It was my pleasure. See you up at the house. When can I get them developed? I'm having them developed tonight. Mr. Houghton. Cindy. Down to the stable. Call the police. Get in there as quick as you can. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm okay. Go on and run. What happened? I took Cindy hostage. I heard them turn off the Granger Pass. You all right? I'm okay.
Jones joined Cup. Knife down the road a piece, you'll have to make a detour. We've got special cargo back there. I know, you've been cleared through to Lancaster. If you go down there, it'll bring you back on 14 in about five miles. Okay, thanks. I guess we better let them know. They're on their way. This is car 12. We've been diverted through Granger Pass by the highway patrol. We'll be back on 14 in about five miles. will be here and they want this how can i ever thank you you just did (laughs) 
More orange juice, Stephen? Thanks, Mrs. Johnson. I love fresh squeeze. You ride beautifully. Oh, thank you. My wife used to ride. Do you mind if I keep the photograph? I don't know what good it'll do. Well, maybe our boys at the lab can do a few tricks of their own. Mom, Dad, you've got to see this! Hey, look at this. Yes. Did you buy those or what? <laughs> Come on, be serious. Now, how much, partner, huh? I only sell them by the dozen, mister. <laughs> Did you deliver all of depths of space they wait. They're creatures of the void, seductive, alien, and hungry for human souls. Patrick Stewart stars in Life Force, the sci-fi feature film, Saturday at 8 p.m. 5 Pacific. Now stay tuned for Quantum Leap, next on the Sci-Fi Channel.